Hey, welcome to the Virtually Speaking podcast series entitled Exploring VMware Cloud Foundation Inside the Private Cloud. Continuing the conversation, exploring all these various components, John, we're going to focus on more storage. This time we're talking about Data Services Manager. I'm sure you've heard of that. Yeah, I have. Um, I might actually have been the lab captain for getting the hands-on lab built, but... Um... Yeah, interesting story for that. I mean, Data Services Manager came out a few years ago, uh, and the first thing I thought about was like, most, and there's a lot of different data services out there, Oracle and stuff like that. And I always assumed that these would be managed already within these applications, you know, by these data services already provide management. So really what is the use case for doing this data services manager? Uh, I, I soon learned the answer to that. And we're going to talk about that today with uh, product marketing engineer, Michael Gandy. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So Michael, let's just start super high level data services manager. Why do we care? Yeah, no, great question. So, so, so you said it, right? So managing data services on VMware infrastructure is not new, right? Uh, we've been doing that after actually from day one, uh, you know, with virtualization of compute network storage, we always make sure that all workloads are running great on our platform. Great means it's resilient, it's secure, it's performant. People used to be scared to run databases, like, oh, we got, we got to keep those physical last. E exactly, exactly. So actually, you know, we, we even have a dedicated team here at VMware to make sure that, uh, you know, this, uh, this workload like Oracle, SQL Server, or SAP are, are running very nicely. What does it mean? It means we work with the software vendor, we work with the hardware provider to make sure that we, we give the best performance. So, and if you look at uh, our VMware telemetry, right, 25% of the VMware workloads are actually data services. So what are data services? Mostly today is a relational database, but we see a lot of, uh, let's say, modern open source data services Think about like uh, Redis, Kafka, Mongo, Minio for object store, right? All these are, it's a long tails. And what we see our customer is like, while they've got, they have dedicated team to manage, you know, the Oracle DBAs or the SQL Server DBAs or maybe a SAP team, they don't have the same dedicated team for all these data services. And they are coming to us, VMware, to say, hey, can you help us to manage, you know, this, this uh, larger fleet of uh, data services? So this is, this is what we're doing. No, that's interesting because, yeah, I've met plenty of, oh, I'm the Oracle guy, I'm the SQL Server guy. But when it comes to Postgre, it's some developer in their spare time of, well, you know, someone gave me an Ubuntu VM and I, you know. I'm deployed. the all other guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, you, you end up with some weird blurry lines of developers starting to run infrastructure, which always scares me sometimes, so. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, actually, it's exactly what is happening, right? You've got the line of business are saying, hey, you know, we'll just download Postgres, right? It's a very good example from, from the internet, right? And we will- Especially for AI, like Postgres is becoming yes, the dial Yes, with DB, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, I mean, PG Vector, right? So they download it. You know, it's easy to get started, right? You start to use it. You use it, of course, for tests, but then, Soon enough, it's in prod, and after if you ask IT, hey, do you know how many Postgres do you have? Not really, which version are you running? Who is monitoring for maybe a vulnerability? You know, so if you start asking all these questions, actually what you realize is a day two operation, right? The lifecycle management, the patching, the upgrade. Clustering. Clustering, HA, how you do it, you know, on a, on, on a, on a VMware infrastructure, is actually not so trivial. And uh, this is exactly what we are, we are solving with a data services manager. Well, so what, what exactly is the strategy for accomplishing all that? It's gotta be, uh, I would imagine it would be a complex strategy because of the fact that there's so many different ways to do these different data services. Yes, uh, great question. And it's true. There's a lot of data services out there, so we need to start somewhere. So the strategy at a very high level is two prong. One, we continue to do what we have been always doing is to deliver the best platform for the traditional commercial, let's call it databases, right? The Oracle SQL Server, IBM DB2 of the world. We've got the ARIA operations, the exactly. ARIA logs, all those capabilities to optimize all and of op that. monitor. And this is what our customers are asking because they say, hey, this is what we need. We've got a dedicated team for the, you know, for all the lifecycle management of, of those databases, right? And by the way, 
you don't need so many of them. So, uh, so they are good, but they want this. They want the automation, the you know, uh, consistent consumption, monitoring, protection as well. Right? This is what they're asking. So we continue to do that. Step one of the strategy. So continue what we are doing. Step two, and this is where Data Services Manager is kicking in, right? For this modern open source, let's call it data services, right? We, VMware, we are bringing all the enterprise hardening, right? So HA clustering, right? We do the lifecycle management um, of these databases. We certify, you know, which uh, version you know, we are on the hook, right, to certify yeah. which version you are using. And, which is very important, where VMware is as well supporting the database itself. So for Postgres and MySQL, we, VMware, are supporting it. So you really have one You've got a end to end yeah, you've support. You've got a support right? path, yeah. Yes, exactly. So how does that look? And, and I know it's not vSphere Lifecycle Manager, of course, no. uh, but, but the common parallel here would certainly be like lifecycle management and stuff like that. So what are the parallels and what does it look like inside of DSM? Yes, yeah, so, um, and when our customer came to us with this problem, actually when they described the problem, we say, wait a minute, it's exactly what we do for VMs, right? You know, all the, you know, this day two operation, I mean, day one, day two operation, what is exactly what we, we know how to do. So this is why we, we went into this space because we saw, hey, there's a, there's, there's a lot of them, right? A lot of data services on our, and we can actually help our customer because we know the infrastructure and this is what we are doing, right? Lifecycle management. So, so yeah, so the, the parallel is if you think of a, an IT admin, right? They can go in the vCenter console and now they can see their infrastructure as they are used to see, but they can see as well their database estate and they can see how these are, are behaving. So, you know, the story here is like usually when you know, it will have a call to IT. Hey, what is happening? You know, the performance is down. And it's very difficult. Is it a database problem? Is it an infrastructure problem? So, you know, now we can start giving the They've tools to understand. They've got the VM metrics. They've got, oh, yeah. CPU is high, but why? Exactly. What's going on? You know, exactly. There's database specific metrics. They exactly, need to exactly. So, so we are starting to give them like a path to resolution that is much faster. This is one. The second one, I mean, everyone is talking about cloud consumption, right? Like the, you mentioned it, right? The, the, the developers downloading Postgres and doing it themselves. Okay, it's great until you have to lifecycle it. Right. But so IT organization now with DSM can do it themselves, but they still need to provide to the line of business this, you know, this self-service experience that developer wants, right? And this is what we are doing. So you've got, uh, I think it's on my shirt, right? IT in control and developer agility, right? So the, this is exactly what we are providing. So we can expose the developer APIs to spin that up, or we can, um, can we pull that into, you know, other cloud management platforms or something like ARIA automation, or can we, can we, you know, how do we drive these creation of these systems? So great question. This is, this is why actually last February, uh, we announced that uh, data services manager is now included in VCF. And I'm very excited about that. And actually our customers are very excited about that because now they've got an end-to-end um, way to consume data services. So, you know, you can consume from IA automation, right? Your, your single pane of glass, let's say for catalogs blueprint or blueprint, include, exactly. Like calling the database creation. Exactly, so all this is integrated and think as data services manager as this engine, you ask for the parallel, right? this engine in the background, right, to do all the, the day two operation, right? And they can use ARIA ops, uh, or operations, sorry, to, um, you know, to do the monitoring, right? And uh, we've got as well management pack dedicated to the specific database. So you can even go deeper into it. And we've got even integration now to vCenter. So for the IT admin, they don't need to go to another console. They can do everything directly from, uh, from vCenter. So this is cool, especially, you know, it makes sense why this is involved with VMware Cloud Foundation, because if we're building a private cloud, think about what you have in public cloud. You know, you have, first you have IaaS, you create some VMs. That's great, but, you know, if that's all you do in public cloud, you're probably doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, you're like, okay, we need some other services. Okay, maybe we get DNS as a service, you know, whatever. But the, the next managed service that I consistently always see, um, you know, besides maybe network overlays or something, 
is is managed databases. Mm -hmm. Like that is the first application you know that's managed that is delivered. And so it's great that we have that same capability. Developers have you know learned to love in public clouds, but they now can bring that into their private cloud. Yes, exactly. I mean, when you build an application, what do you need? You need compute and you need a database, right? At the end of the day. And uh, now with like, you know, DS, sorry, data services manager being into uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, a lot of acronyms at VMware, so trying to spell the full name, yeah. <laughs> you know. So uh, yeah, you have actually out of the box, right? A DBAS solution, a customer managed DBAS solution in, uh, in your private cloud. Okay, so we understand the, the databases, the data services that, that can be managed. I'm curious, what are some of the more common use cases for folks that are interested in DSM? Yes, so there's two main use, case, uh, use cases today. The first one is the one that I, I mentioned, right? It's like uh, what you described, right? Uh, our, our customer, they, they want basically a database management as a service, sure. right? For their line of business. You know, they want the same, the same experience that they will have in the public cloud. The line of business come to IT organizations and say, hey, I need Postgres as a service, I need MySQL as a service, you know, and whatnot. And it's reliable and consistent. It's the same, you know, OS image. It's the same, they can force the patch levels. Because that's something that always amazed me is I'd come into a shop consulting and I'd be like, okay, I, I know what that VM is. I know what that is. What are these three VMs? They're like, oh, those are various app VMs. They're running weird flavors of MySQL and Postgres. And it's like, it would be three different Linux distributions somehow running, you know, five different versions of the database that were years behind on patches. Yes. And I mean, just a caveat on that, we hear some customer where like, you know, I'm asking, hey, you know, if today there's a vulnerability, how long it will take you to, to tell me, you know, which one is running which one? Okay, I need to call some people. They will get, they will give me some Excel spreadsheet, you know, over the weekend, and I will give you a response. This is not how it works, right? What we give here is a fleet management that, hey, you've got a single console, you can check which version, you know, are they No small to... batch handcrafted artisanal database <laughs> deployments. We've exactly. got this, I like that fleet management term. Hey, exactly, exactly. So this is one use case, right? Um, uh, and I, I believe you had as well the private AI team come here and we are very excited because like when you talk to customer, you know, AI is great. The, it's not bad. The second thing is say, hey, we want to use our data, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Where these data are living, they live in databases, right? For the uh, on customer site, on-prem, right? So about private AI. So the second one, we are working very um, tightly with the private AI team. Uh, basically, we are the DB provider, right? We provide uh, Postgres and PG Vector uh, for this uh, AI use case. So these are the, really the two use cases that we are driving. Mm, OK, OK. So uh, data services manager existed before it was part of VMware Cloud Foundation. Yes. Now it's actually inside. It's actually, is it an add-on or is it in the core offering of just VMware Cloud Foundation? It is in the core offering, no added cost. And I'm very excited about that because I think you, you mentioned right now, uh, of course, I cannot say where we are going, but I see a lot of great excitement around as well this integration with the, the other pieces, right, of uh, of VCF, and uh, I think customers are very excited as well because they, they see, you know, data services becoming like this uh, uh, first-class citizen, yeah. right? So having a catalog, using we're already something. making containers, you know, peers to virtual machines. Now it's time to make databases exactly. peers to virtual machines. Exactly. Yeah, I think this database thing is catching on, John. So I, I think they're going to be around for a while. <laughs> so managing them is probably a good thing. <laughs> Uh, Michael, this is great. Last question for you before we let you go. Where can people go to learn more about DSM? Yes, so um, there's really three places. Of course, you can go to VMware.com, right, uh, to see the high-level information. Or Google. Yeah, <laughs> or Google. Uh, but really, I, I want to give three uh, links. Uh, the, the first one, where I say we have a dedicated team on the workload on VCF, right? Uh, so we've got a lot of reference architecture, if you want to go a bit more in the technical details, right? So uh, we'll have the link. Uh, the second one, uh, we are working with uh, Cormac Hogan, uh, one of our like, uh, chief technologists, and he's got a ton of great blog posts with videos. So I would really recommend, if you want to go a bit more like in the how-to, to go to, uh, to Cormac. Cormac's had a ton of blogs. Yes, yes, yes. 
So, so you can go really in each step that you're interested in. And the, the last one, uh, last but not least, right? It's uh, if you want to talk to the product team, not only me, to the, but as well to the product management, um, we we are looking for customer to, you know, to discuss me to long roadmap item because it's called data services manager. So I will leave it which which one is next on the list. Nice, 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 nice it's, little uh, clue there. <laughs> I, having looked under the hood, like this platform really is extensible to, to adding more services. So it's going to be interesting to see what, what comes next. And yeah, I'm sure you guys would like to hear what customers want next. Exactly. Very nice. My, Michael, thank you so much for joining us on Virtually Speaking. And for those listening, be sure to go to VMware.com and look up Data Services Manager. Michael, thanks. Thank you very much. Bye.